What up, everybody? Welcome back to Fro Publications YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about zines and DIY culture. These are the zines that I publish. Uh, Feral Comics, comic book zine anthology, always looking for new contributors. But today we're here talking about Milk and Honey, issue 4 and 5. Uh, finishing it up because uh, yesterday we got into issue 1, 2, and 3. And that's one of the first things I wanted to mention. You can see that they went from a normal zine size, a lot like the ones I publish. Boom. Into a more f like uh, conventional comic book size. Right? So just so you guys can see the scale of it. Boom. So that's one of the first major differences that I've seen. Uh, some of the formatting as well got smoother. I really enjoyed this right here, table of contents. And then in the back, it being just the pages on, upon pages of social media um, handles and uh, having them all alphabetically ordered. One of the other things that I noticed in issue four and five was that there was a bigger push towards diversity and not only in creators, but in narratives. But then you get to this one right here called Staying Home by Sushi. And this this story right here, and not and not in a very obscene way, but in a very emotional way, right? It talks about uh, a woman's right to choose and basically the shaming that they, you know, that they put upon women for that decision and how they're very, very easygoing when it comes to a man's participation in that. And I just thought this was one of those where I read it and I said, wow, this is an amazing comic to print. Um, one of the interviews in here, right here, boom. I enjoyed this a lot as well, and I really want to quote them on one of them. And so this interview right here was the one I liked the most. The other one was Scott uh, Hensel and uh, Caroline Smith, who you guys know I'm big fans of, and I read and follow a lot of their comics. But this in interview here with Jerome Smith, Elijah Simon, and Travis Smith, and one of the main reasons was this part right here. Oftentimes... Your cast of characters are strong black heroes. How is this representation important in the comic scene to your community and other artists of color? We feel that it is very important to have diversity in the comic scene. There is a lack of heroic characters of color in the industry. It is very important for our community and other artists to see many different races of strong heroes. Currently, what we're bringing to the table is strong black heroes in the leading role both male and female. Representation is a good thing for kids of all races Everyone needs a hero that they can relate to, a hero that looks like you. And so I definitely dug this um, I dug this interview a lot. And so this was also my favorite comic here, and it just shows more of that inclusivity. This comic book is the same comic strip on both sides, but one is in Spanish and one is in English. Now, I'm not sure if the creator is a Spanish speaker or an English speaker or how this all panned out, but I just love to see that. And a very philosophical kind of narrative. And I just, I really love the art. And when I seen that it was in, in dual language, I hella love that. Um, definitely, definitely, this made my, my whole reading experience with this issue. So in issue five, you get more of what you got in issue four. You get amazing comics, great art, but as well, more inclusivity. This interview here was the best one from this comic. And, uh... And basically, they're talking to a fellow by the name of H.P. Fangs, which basically, he had an art uh, show where basically, I want to do all black characters that no one pays attention to in cartoons. And he talks about how, you know, there's always that one token uh, character of color, and he wanted to make, you know, a, a, an art gallery or an art show basically showing that. And allowing those characters to be seen and acknowledged in the comic book universes. And this is another thing that I really enjoyed, right? This is like Milk and Honey. You can also see the progression, right? Because not only do I read comics, I publish comics. So like a lot of the things that they're doing and the way they're building it, it's very interesting to me to see how uh, Giancarlo uh, does it, right? Like he's scaling this up. And, and on right here, you can uh, use this QR code, which we're all familiar with QR codes. But you can use the QR code to see the actual interview that Milk and Honey did with uh, with HP Fangs. So, you know, just amazing scaling up. 
And this issue had two comics that really stole the show for me. And one of them was this, Tag, the Assassination Game. Which I haven't had the time because I just finished reading this. But I haven't had the chance to see whether or not this is true. But they're basically talking about a movie which was the first uh, theatrical appearance of Linda Hamilton and Forrest Whitaker. And it's this very strange uh, Roger Corman film, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Roger Corman film. And Roger Corman I like a lot, man. Um, There's a lot of shit that he's done that I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of his and John Carpenter. I really like their over-the-top DIY approach to filmmaking. So this I found very interesting because they're talking about this movie that has never been released, yet has all these big names attached to him, right? Even the writer-director played the original Michael Myers in the John Carpenter film. So there's a lot, like, so when I read this, I, I had literally my head explode, like, I was just like dumbfounded, like what the fuck? How did I never hear about this? Tag the assassination game. And in this comic strip, he talks about how you can probably find it bootlegged on the internet. So I'm definitely going to peep that out and I might even do a review on it because why the fuck not, right? This comic series right here, uh, Meeting Comics, was some of the funniest shit I've read in a long time. And... This shit just had me fucking dying. And I'm not sure if he's still uh, publishing these. But according to this meme. Meeting Comics' is a gag comic soap opera by Andrew Neal. is published online three times a week. Then collected in a mini comic format every two months. The first six issues have been collected into a book from Ad House Books. So definitely that means you can read these online. And, uh, and uh, potentially if you're like me. You like to hold it in your hands and read it. You can purchase the books and the zines. Yeah, so I don't know if this is, is still current because this is uh, in the back of issue 4. In the back of issue 5, I didn't see any of this. But right here, this portion right here says, Thank you again for supporting Milk and Honey Comic Anthology. We hope that this magazine has entertained and inspired you and that you have discovered new cartoonists and friends with our pages. With every publication, we strive to build a budding community of artists from all walks of life. All art is welcome and we would love to hear from you. If you would like to inquire about being a contributor, please submit your works and information to Milk and honey comics at gmail.com so there you go you guys for all the cartoonists that watch the channel if you guys want to submit to milk and honey this is where it's at you guys so that's all i got for you guys today man thank you so much for watching please like share and subscribe and let's keep building this motherfucker up all right you guys lates